What's going on guys? So today, we're just knocking out a super quick video on, uh, on painting. Um, everyone has a painting video. I've been asked before, hey, how do you paint your AR? So I'm gonna do it on uh, these two HDP Nalgene's. It's uh, pretty simple. Uh, let's get started. So for most of, uh, most of the canteens and any water bottle that I paint, uh, really with anything, you're going to paint important parts off, or you're going to tape important parts off. For this, I really don't tape important parts so much as I like to tape the graduation spots. Um, reason being is that I like having, beyond just taping the graduation spots, I like having an area where I can see how much water is left in, or is still remaining. In this case with the bottles, I've done it to my canteens that I've painted. Uh, and it's nothing crazy, so yeah, just a strip over here over the graduations. I don't mind too much how much is left. I mean, in this case, I'll just err. I'll cut, or I'll, yeah, I'll just err to where uh, the milliliters are. And the other one, you know, like I said, I really don't care. So this is pretty easy. Uh, Seal the top, and then we'll put a quick base paint of this Brownells OD Green Alumahide. Uh, we'll see if it works on this. If not, I'll reassess, shake up the can. I'll just stand it up. All right, a little too close. That's okay. It doesn't need to be perfect. It only needs to work. So if you're ever messing around with uh, spray painting and you're worried about doing it on your gun first, um, try it out on one of your, try it on an algae. Something, uh, something like this, something simple. Not gonna miss it too much if you have to go buy a new one. And that way, you get some practice for when you're, uh, Spray painting your rifle or your tripod or whatever. Very light, gentle touch. I really don't care if I get paint on my fingers too much, but. I'll take a look at the other one. Great, not terrible. Just a quick, quick dusting just to make sure everything's covered up. All right, now I'll let it dry. Forgot to mention this before, but as these bottles are drying, um, you should really get a bottle of this if you're concerned at all about like, ooh, I got paint somewhere I shouldn't have. I got paint, you know, if you're painting a rifle, I got paint on an optic or something. A little dab of goo gone on your uh on a rag will clean off most of the paint uh if you really care to you can clean off the paint on your fingers or get on your hands or whatever else really just you know be sparing about it and make sure to keep it away from what you actually want painted always do it on a rag and then wipe off never uh never just spray on there otherwise you're gonna ruin your paint job and then you're gonna feel like an idiot so we're just gonna wait a little bit let this thing dry uh, continue filming. <clears throat> All right, one of the bottles is mostly dry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to my next layer of paint. Uh, in this case, I'm still using the brown nose Alumahide. Really, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to experiment with different paints. I don't like the color schemes of the rust the camo series, and I can't seem to find any good Krylon camo series anywhere, so. We're just going to try it with that. So, you're going to grab whatever your stencil is. Uh, 
in this case, I'm using just the, the same mesh bottle. And you're going to just kind of drape that on there. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to, you know, not, contrary to popular belief, you're not doing this for a pretty, for a pretty, uh, paint job you're doing it for an effective paint job and while they're not mutually exclusive you know a little smudging here a little uh, it got blotchy here instead of a <clears throat> instead of a uh, you know clean edge it is what it is so uh, when you're doing well when I do camouflaging I like stripes a lot so I'll just do some stripes there do a little on the uh, on the higher surfaces be careful because uh well I was just saying hey your your thing might streak it definitely will streak if you start rubbing up the uh, the material stencil material some people don't like to do it like this uh, I do and it's worked fine so far um, I also understand that this paint at some point is going to rub off. It's just the nature of paint. So, one more. There. And then, I could let it dry, but I'm always very eager. So, I'll just gently, 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 gently pull it off, peel it off, and there you go. You'll see that nice wet pattern there and I'll set this one to the side and let's see if this one's dry eh, just about so same thing I'm gonna wrap it in my stenciling material old I forget what this was it was some sort of it might be like a dive bag or something I'm gonna wrap it in that I'm gonna make sure it's fixed in place to some degree and then I'm gonna grab my brown paint and I'm gonna just kind of freehand whatever style I want that is the cool thing about painting a lot of guys do layers I agree with layers um, if you don't what ends up happening is you uh you end up with weird like the paint kind of mixes poorly especially with what i'm about to do now which is switch paint companies right now i'm using the brownells alumahide but in a moment i won't be so i'm gonna try and pull that off it's probably streaked a bunch yep it's wiped off a bit Sometimes you can do something like cut up a little square, kind of press it up against there, like so. Sorry. Oh, I live by an airbase. So, uh, as you can see here, um, me being stupid and eager, you can already start seeing paint coming off of uh, where I keep grabbing the handle. That's just because I'm impatient and kind of doing this for a demo to show you guys how to paint it. You really should just follow whatever instructions are on the can for curing. Um, that being said, you know, just because you smudged it up a little doesn't mean you should just strip all the paint and go back to square one. It's going to wear out. Uh, it's just the nature of how these things work. But you can kind of see how, the, how it's patterning. And uh, let me just get, wait for this to dry a little more so I can add the last bit of paint. And then we'll get to it. So, as you can see here, oh, again, more jets. <sighs> of course, I picked the film right when, uh, right when the jets decide to fly around. But, so as you can see here, I'm just kind of pressing up the material. And do 
small little blotches here and there. Pull it off. Move the can a bit. Pull it back in. Or hold it. Pull it back in. Um, with your stencil, if you do stuff like that, just understand that the further you are away from the uh, the stencil, the further the stencil is away from the surface you're painting, the more like soft that those edges get. So if you look at the bottom there, that stencil's a lot further than at the top. It's just something to think about. I, I mean, I personally don't care, but you might. So yeah, there you have it. Uh, paint's still wet, but you can kind of get an idea. It's just, you know, super simple. Obviously, I haven't let it dry, so it's rubbing out. You should let it cure or dry. You should ideally let it dry between layers, but... <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to watch this video again or ask in the comments, or watch any of the other million videos there are on painting. Uh, take care.